Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about the rise and fall of Tai Tuivasa. Now, this is not to say Tai Tuivasa uh, can't get a, a better matchup than he's been getting because the last four opponents have been a very good variety of opponents, especially I think in the top 10 guys. So I think Tybor is the lowest ranked fighter that he has fought. And I, I, again, I do want to say at 31 years old, there is a world out there where Tai Tuivasa gets a lower ranked person outside of the top 10, outside of the top 15, and he's able to get back on track. Um, that being said, he's had such a weird career. And again, at 31 years old, he's been finished six out of seven times. He's now 15 and seven, four fight losing streak. All four of his losses are by finish. Um, he has, he's been finished six times in the UFC. He's lost one decision. Eight and seven as well in the UFC. So, again, it is it is weird because before his MMA career and, and kind of during it as well, he was also doing some kickboxing. And he's been finished before outside, even before he lost to Junior Dos Santos. He had been finished before. Um, so it's not anything really new that... You know, he, he has a good chin. He is, quote-unquote, durable to an extent, of course. Um, his biggest thing is his lack... In, I don't necessarily want to say lack of discipline, but I don't necessarily think the training environment that he is in is doing him any justice. You know, it, it says here in Topology that his... Um, uh, his head coach is Sean Sullivan. Uh, it doesn't say, of course. Oh, Lions High Performance Center, which, okay, sure. He's number 12 ranked heavyweight as of right now. He, I think he was 9, 8 or 9 going into the Tybura fight. 8 and 7 in the career in, in his UFC career. 10 and 0 when he fought Junior DeSantos, which I believe was a main event. Pretty sure, yeah, it was a main event. And that was a while ago. I mean, you look back at it, that was back in 2018. He was 24, no, 25 years old, fighting Junior Santos at 10 and 0. And had his moments in that matchup, and then you lose to Junior Santos. Okay, fine. Not a big deal. Literally, not a big deal. Back and forth, you're a striker, you're fighting Junior Santos back when he was still decent at 34 years old. At that point, it didn't start to catch up to Junior, so that's that's not a bad loss at that point. So now looking back, maybe that's like oh, not great, but if you look at it, it's not that bad of a loss back then. Again, Junior was Junior was nineteen and five then, so it, it's not not a bad loss. So and again, he had moments. He just was countered by a very good, uh, powerful striker in Junior De Santos. Then he loses to uh, Blagoy Ivanov. Uh, by decision, that's the one decision he's lost in the UFC. And then he loses and gets submitted by Sergey Spivak. Gets back on track and fights Stefan Struve, Harry Hunsucker, and Greg Hardy. Something I really want to point out is Stefan Struve finishes, I believe, with an uppercut against the cage. Fights Harry Hunsucker, who is terrible. Terrible. I don't care that he had a 7-3 and record at that point. He is awful he's seven and six as of right now he's been finished four out of six losses six times he's been finishing his career all six of his losses are by finish i did did fight in a grappling match and won but he's awful and when i tell you he's awful he's awful this guy is so bad, it's unbelievable that he had as many opportunities as he did in the UFC. Now again, uh, uh, Tai Tuivasa debuted against Rashad Coulter, who actually retired because he couldn't find an opponent, which is odd to me. Uh, lose, uh, beats him by flying knee. Uh, Cyril Asker, he beats him, which was a really nasty finish. And then beats Andre Arlovsky by decision. And then, then he gets the uh, Junior Dos Santos main event and loses three in a row after that. And then wins, you know, three uh, beats, as like I said, Struve, 
Uh, Harry Hunsucker, Greg Hardy, Augusto Sakai, he beats, who Sakai was on the decline and then won and got cut, which is odd. And then beat Derek Lewis in a matchup where Derek Lewis had a lot of momentum, was get, was taken a uh, tight down, was beating him up. And then the durability and the uh, speed of Taito Vasa actually helped him knock out Derek Lewis. So it's like, okay, cool. Now, won five in a row. Five wins in a row by knockout. Done very, very well. The The hard things about that is after you beat Derek Lewis, now you're set up to get a big, big spot. After you finish Augusto Sakai, and we know what type of guy you are, none of these guys are really challenging him on the ground. Derek Lewis, like I said, took him down, but didn't really hold him there. Not a wrestler, really. And the crazy thing is, is if he wanted to take him down, he probably could have and held him there. But that's not Derek Lewis's game. Um, but that that's th those are quality wins. The Greg Hardy one is a little bit um, uh, misconstruing because it, you see a counter hook or whatever and he, in a minute and seven seconds. Greg Hardy wobbled Tai Tuivasa, something that people don't talk about. Greg Hardy, his speed and his power kind of showed up in that matchup. And he went right at Tai Tuivasa, wobbled him, and then just ended up rushing because he didn't have the uh, uh, mature maturity i guess i don't know what, what that word would be but um he just rushed in and they got caught with the counter counter hook and then finished um again greg hardy wobbled the hell out of tai to avasa and then rushed in can't really do that against tai unless you're going for a takedown and then he fights cyril gone and drops cyril drops him hurts him real bad but there's this distance this line of distance Ty always has to cross when he fights a guy like Cyril Gan, because Cyril is so well-rounded. On top of the takedowns, you know, his kicks, his long strikes, his punches, understanding that Gan has those weapons against a guy like Ty Tuivasa who's just looking to box, Cyril Gan knows that there's this distance, this barrier that he can have Ty Tuivasa at and throw these kicks Throw these teeps, throw these leg kicks, understanding that Ty needs to cross this distance to throw punches, to connect, to throw those combos, to you know, to do those certain things. And gone every single time. He'd throw punches at him, but every time these kicks would land, it was getting a reaction out of Ty. And anybody knows, okay, I'm getting a reaction out of these kicks. Ty's gonna try to come back and blitz me with these punches. And then we get the result that we did. You know, him knocking out, hurting Ty to the body a thousand times. And then finishing him with the punches. It was a pretty bad knockout. So then, uh, again, loses to Zero Gone on September 3rd of 2022. Comes back and fights Sergei Pavlovich exactly three months later. When you get knocked out, you there is a suspension you have to serve. Typically, it's 60 or it's 90 day suspension, no contact, maybe for 30, maybe to 60 days. So in those times, Taito Avasa is not really sparring. He's not doing anything that's contact wise. That's frustrating to come back and fight. It's for the same example of like Tafan, uh, Tafan and Zeku, Zeku, I might not be saying that right. Um, the guy that fought Carlos Olberg was knocked out by Azat, the guy that beat Dustin Jacoby. With, uh, he, he knocked out Tefan with a flying knee, came back and fought Coles Olberg, and really the first or second jab Olberg landed, he was able to knock him out, um, which maybe not would have happened if he wasn't coming off of a knockout loss shortly before that. You know, fights, fights Sergey Pavlich, and, and not saying Sergey doesn't beat Ty, but knocking Ty down with a jab, I understand how powerful Sergey is. Coming back three months after being flatlined, it doesn't help your chin. And Ty said he's never been hit that hard, you know, with a jab in his life. Yeah, sure. But it also, your brain is so rattled from being flatlined three months before because you didn't give yourself time to heal. You know, there's, there's advantages in that matchup for Ty. He's faster. That's probably his biggest. He throws better combinations than Pavlich. Pavlich is this big hulking guy that as we've seen with tom aspinall that stuff's never gonna work at the elite level you know curtis blades was even able to close that distance fairly simply fairly easy so again 
fighting fighting Sergey three months after beginning being flatlined by Sir, Serial Gan. Not a great career decision. Then he comes back and fights uh, Alexander Volkov about a year later. I think it's what ten months. Uh, three months would be one year. So nine nine months later, and looks terrible. And that one was concerning because Volkov, even though Volkov was able to knock out Rosenstrike, even though people say uh, bad stoppage, he was lighting Rosenstruck up. Yeah, maybe it is a, a slight uh, early stoppage, but Rosenstruck was slumping against the cage. And he was like, ugh, 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 like convulsing when Volkov was hitting him. It was stumbling him. Volkov is not a big power puncher. He's accurate at times, sure. He's also not a great wrestler. Look what Tom Aspinall did to him. Yeah, sure, maybe he got a little bit better after the Aspinall fight. Maybe that made him realize he needs to do some work on there. Sure. But Volkov is able to take Tai Tuivasa down and literally do whatever he wanted to him. Beat him up, literally did whatever. And then he Ezekiel chokes him and finishes him in the second round, late in the second round. The concerning thing with that fight is the lack of awareness or he didn't even really try to defend much. <clears throat> I understand if you're not great on the ground. I, I, I Sure. But when it's a consistent thing, it's the same thing that Sergei Spivak did to him. It's, it's the same thing. War on him, war on him, war on him, arm triangle choke. Volkov did the exact same thing. War on him, war on him, war on him, beat him up, beat him up, beat him up, choke. Okay. Then he comes back, you know, six months later, about five and a half months later, and fights Marcin Tabora. Has moments early as you will against Tybora if you're a striker and you're a fast striker, and Tybora's had issues with big, big, big power guys early, but unless you're Derek Lewis, of course, but okay. Sure. You know, in Tybora, we all said it. If Tybora gets out of the first or second round, Tybora, or if Tybora can get him down, we all we all talked about it. If Tybora can get him down, he can do a lot of good work, whether he finishes him in the first, second, third, fourth, or fifth. If he gets him down, he's going to do a lot of good work. It's just depending on when he wants to finish him as many times as he gets him down to the ground. Now, that turned out to be, if I get you down to the ground in the first, you're not going to be able to defend anything, or you're not going to defend anything. And then you get finished. You know, I don't really know where Ty goes after this. Four losses in a row. Four finishes in a row. It. The concern, again, is this is not the first time he's been on a losing streak. And this is not, in, in, he still is having these issues. He's still having these issues. It's not changing from the time before. He was just able to... You know, the, the the longest fight he had was a minute and 40 in round number two with Derek Lewis. Four strikers. Four strikers. Or five strikers. I'm sorry. Five strikers. Stefan Struve, not a grappler. Harry Hansucker, awful. Greg Hardy, caught him, hurt him, stri was striking with him, got finished. Sakai, striker. Lewis, striker. Sio Gan, well-rounded. Sergey Pavlich is the one striker. You can say for sure. Took that on ridiculously short notice. Shouldn't have fought him. Volkov. Typically a striker. Not really a grappler. And then Marcin Tybora. A grappler. Not a striker. Has had a lot of issues getting finished early. It's not great. But as always guys. Let me know what you guys think. Should Tai Tuivasa be released? Where do you think Tai Tuivasa goes from here? And as always guys. You're incredible. Thank you for everything. Peace.